don't worry, we're in Sweden now. There's no such thing as trespassing over here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael and I'm also known as Bike Touring Mike. And I've recently come back from a bike packing trip with my friend Ryan Van Duser here in Sweden. And during those episodes, we've gotten a lot of questions about the Allemansrätten or the right to public access as we have here in Sweden. And since Allemansrätten is a quite unique thing we have here in Sweden, it only exists here and in somewhat lesser degree in Norway and Scotland and a couple of other countries. This thing might seem a bit foreign for people that aren't from these countries. So I thought this would be a good time to talk a little bit more about the Swedish Allemansrätten. So the Allemansrätten was created back in 1937 to give everyone the chance to roam and enjoy the beauty of our nature here in Sweden. And the motto of the Allemansrätten is as long as you don't destroy or disturb anyone you're able to enjoy the nature here in Sweden as much as you're able to. So this means that you're able to walk, ride your bike, ride a horse, ski or even camp at any land except for in someone's garden or near someone's house. You're able to pick berries, mushrooms and flowers even on someone else's private property. And there's no general distance that you have to maintain from someone's house. Instead, it's all up to you. The important thing is you don't disturb the people that live there. So it's up to you to determine how far away that is. And it also depends on what type of activity you're doing. If you're just walking by or riding your bike by someone's house, you might not have to be that far away from the house. But if you're planning on pitching your tent, you might want to stay quite a bit away from that person's house. The general rule when pitching your tent is that you're able to stay at the same location for a couple of nights before it's time to move on. And that fits us backpackers perfectly since we're rarely spending more than one night in the same location. So if you're out riding your bike in the middle of nowhere along a gravel road like this, you might encounter one of these roadblocks you're basically allowed to just ignore it. The landowner is allowed to block off traffic to his or her property, but this only applies to motorized traffic. So if you're walking or riding your bike, you can basically just ignore this. And don't worry, no one's gonna come storming off their patio with a shotgun in their hand. And as you're cycling in Sweden, you're probably going to stumble upon one of these fences. And even though you might think that this is a fence marking off private property, it really isn't. This fence is just to prohibit wild animals from walking up onto the highway and getting run over by cars or trucks. And there are typically openings in the fence, so you are able to access the land that's behind fences like this one. In fact, I think I saw an opening over here. And even though I love the fact that you're able to pitch your tent basically anywhere here in Sweden, I almost love the fact that you're able to pick berries, mushrooms and flowers even more. Picking berries in the late summer, early fall is a favorite hobby of mine. and. My favorite berries to pick are lingonberries, blueberries and probably most of all cloudberries. So Sweden can be a real paradise for bikepackers with all of its gravel roads and the ability to be able to pitch your tent at almost any place you choose. And if you're lucky you might even stumble upon one of these free shelters that are scattered all over Sweden. No one really knows how many there are, but the closest approximation would be around 10,000 of these. And they're usually located at a scenic site by a lake, river or on top of a mountain. And usually you can find a fire pit either within the shelter itself or just outside. And they're frequently restocked with firewood for you to use. 
So there's no inventory of all of these shelters, but there is a site that lists almost 3,000 of these. And I'll leave a link down to that site in the description below. What about the national parks and the nature reserves? Well, the Alemansrätten also includes these. But here there are typically local law and uh, regulations. So it's wise to check up on these upon going to your national park of choice. So in general you're able to pitch your tent but it might be in designated campsites. But you never need a permit or anything like that. So now you know all there is to know about the Swedish Allemansrätten and there is basically nothing stopping you from going on your own adventure here in Sweden. And if you need some inspiration, I'll see you in this video.